happiness is beautiful. It's a kind of reality. Happiness is the highest good. Happiness is free. So let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Welcome to the Happiness Show. This is George Ortega. I'm here with Lionel Ketchy, and we're here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. So today we have a very special show with, uh, for you. We have an interview with happiness expert Rabbi Zelig Pliskin. Um, it's going to be an amazing show. I just wanted to preface it with like kind of like an explanation of how we became aware of Rabbi Pliskin's work. Basically, I was I was like practicing Orthodox Judaism back in around 1985. A friend of mine referred me to this book. His book is called Gateway to Happiness. His first book. He's written um, 19 books. He's working on his 20th, and he um, he's also actually like a. a a joy coach, joy therapist, in a sense that, like, you know, wherever he goes, he, he uh, tries to make people happier. But anyway, the, the idea is that, like, this book is so amazing. I mean, Lionel and I both agree that it's like the best happiness book out there by far. I used to carry this book around. I used to, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I used to carry it around. I've read some of the um, chapters 20 times. So, and, and, you know, recently I introduced it to Lionel, and he's like, you know, raving about it. He just wrote an article about it. So, anyway, this is going to be an awesome show. So, um, Rabbi, welcome to the show. Thank you very welcome. much. It's a pleasure being here. Great. Okay, so now let's, let's start out. Now, you've written a lot about happiness. Okay, so why, you know, Obviously, it's very important. Why, why, why is it so important? Good question. Because if you look at most of the basic reasons why, besides keeping alive, which is the number one thing we humans have to do, almost everything we want and everything we're aiming for is for positive feelings. There are positive ways of doing this, like one of the most beautiful ways of doing this is being kind to people. You do an act of kindness, like Alfred Adler, the Illyrian psychology, one of the earliest psychoanalysts, he has in one of his books that the way to the cure depression in 14 days is to do a major act of kindness every day. Do acts of kindness every day, and 14 days it will just change your life. And th this is a fascinating idea. And what we want in life is to be in a positive emotional state. One of the biggest problems in our generation is people aiming for being in better feelings in counterproductive ways. Cigarette smoking, drugs, all anger even, even screaming at people to feel a little better, all these are counterproductive ways to get ourselves to feel better. And then there's the positive, healthy ways of feeling better, appreciating what we have, being grateful, feeling grateful because like the this, this ancient sages have really said a lot of wisdom that modern times this wisdom gets repeated over and over again. And so happiness is so important because our connection with our Creator, our connection with other people is based on our emotional states. And our own health and well-being and accomplishment in life depends on, like, if, they, if they have to have a teacher in a school, and the teacher walks in happy and keeps the students happy, whether they're first grade or whether they're college levels, if you enjoy what you're doing, if you feel positive about what you're doing, you're going to do so much better. Our brain works better. So our whole system works better when we're or positive emotional states. Right, and would you kind of like include that happiness is really the point of, of life? It's, it's why why the world was created so that we could be happy and, and you know enjoy ourselves as much as possible? Or? Well, it's a, since it's such an, a basic aspect of our life, it shows that it's a real fundamental. It is a basic, basic principle. And if you'd ask a parent, what do you want most for your children? I want my children to be happy. And basically, that sense of being happy is really what we want in many situations. And what people are willing to do for it is tremendous, except doing it the wrong way. People can, like let's say a person loves zooming cars down the road. And if you go over the speed limit, you get good feeling. You're not going real fast. The only thing is you crash, you hurt yourself, you hurt other people. So we need to find ways that are healthy for us, good for the world, and good for everyone we interact with. Yeah, and you know, bringing up the idea that as parents, we want happiness for our children. Here's, here's a, a great, uh, not only role model uh, for kids, but for ourselves. Because if we take on happiness for ourselves, 
of course we're doing ourselves a tremendous amount of good, mm -hmm. but look at all the good we're going to do for our kids. Isn't right, that true? very much, very powerful, very strongly. Mm. Like if a parent's upset with a child, they might scream or get angry at the child for not doing something that what the child to do. Well, if the parent is in a happy state, get the child in a happy state, you can create the whole thing in a positive way. For instance, even a parent telling a child, let's clean up the room. One way it is, everybody, you have to clean up your room now. The other way is, hey, let's have a great time putting away the toys now. Yeah, we're going to have fun putting away the toys. That's toys. Now, if you're starting with a three-year-old, whatever attitude you give, that's what they're going to get. Great. Okay. Now, you're, you conduct ongoing research on happiness, and your most recent research is on states. Basically, you've, you've, you've researched states, and you've developed um, a list of states, an extensive list. Could you tell us about this? About collecting states? Yes. Yeah, the model that I have came across in 1982, I read Frogs into Princes by Bandler and Grinder, the founders of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And what I personally found very fascinating, NLP is based on a principle that the sages many years ago in a work called Pirkei Avos, Chapters of the Fathers, had who was a wise person. And the Talmudic definition of two definitions of a wise person. One definition is the one who learns from everyone. The other definition is a person who sees the outcome. So let's say learn from everyone. It makes sense, let's say, in any field in the world, if you want to be a great salesman, who are you going to study? Great salesman. You want to be a great quarterback? Study great quarterbacks. Any field, you want to be a great chef? Study, study people who are great chefs. Psychology is the one field that, what are we aiming for? We're aiming for a couple basic states, joy states, and we're aiming for serene states. So logic would say, who should we model? Find the happiest people. So a certain psychoanalyst in Vienna should have said, I want to find out how people can be learn to be happy. I'll walk around the streets of Vienna and find who's singing in the rain, who's always joyful, which children love the parents and parents love the children. We're going to find out how to be joyful. Find people who are calm and serene and learn how to master serenity. Unfortunately, that's not the way the system worked. Now, Alfred Adler uh, did, so he was into finding joy through that kindness, but the idea of states is like this. The model that Bandler and Grinder use is really a computer-based model that we have states collected in our mind. And the article I wrote in a journal called Anchor Point in May uh, 2000, in the March, rather, March 2001, an article I wrote called On Collecting States. And it's like this. Every time in an especially good state, give the state a name. If you give a state a name, then you can access that state at will. Meaning, states are made of the pictures we see in the mind, the words we tell ourselves, the feelings we have throughout our system. And there's even 10 factors. I have an acronym, B-B-B-E-H-H-I-N-T-T. What does that stand for? These are 10 things that happen when you change your state. B is your breathing. Your breathing rate changes. Like the ancient sages said, be grateful for every single breath. You breathe, and if you breathe gratitude breathing, you're in great shape. But as soon as you change your state, get in a fearful, upset state, your breathing will change. Get in a joyful state, your breathing changes. Or breathe as you breathe. If you're joyful, you're going to a good state. Second B is brain waves. As soon as you change your state, your brain waves change. There's an actual electrical change in your states. Blood pressure changes. Energy energy level changes, the hormones change, the heartbeat change. Hormones are super important because when you change your state, there's physiological changes. Dr. Candace Pert in Johns Hopkins, pretty near my house in Baltimore, where I grew up, downtown Baltimore, um, she did research on the biochemistry of emotions, which Norman Cousins did a little further in UCLA in the early 1980s. Norman Cousins did research that if you act joyfully, got actors to act as if they did a great job on a play, and New York Times wrote a beautiful review, and it's celebrating, that was wonderful, that was terrific, that was great, and nothing happened, they just made it up. And they took out a little blood, they found in the bloodstream, the endorphins, they found the positive emotions. Now, everybody in the world can do this. We all could acting joyfully. And as a matter of fact, in 1740, there was a great scholar, a Kabbalist, an ethical writer. His name was Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato. He writes in four words, four words in Hebrew, Tnuah Chitzonim Arapnemius. Your external movements arouse your inner state. 
William James came up with this, 1890, 150 years later. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Program, was into this. Salter in the 1940s was into this. That if you act the way that you want to be, you, uh, your mind-body actually puts you in that state. So we have all these physiological things. Our physiology changes. Our tone of voice changes. So we have actual changes. There's a reality to this that if the way you talk and act changes states. For instance, Dr. Paul Ekman found research that when you smile, then you you're automatically going to feel better. Conversely, if you act if you're angry, like the sages teach also in chapter of the fathers, greet every person with a smile. Greet every person with joy is another statement over there. And if you greet people with joy, you're constantly greeting people. And the one person we should greet with joy every day is ourselves. I used to own an EMG, electromyograph, a bottle right. feedback machine that cost me a thousand dollars. Then an electrician years ago botched it up, didn't work. It worked for a little while, but it's amazing. Every word you think, you see changes of electricity in your system. But now that I don't have my thousand dollar machine, I got for a few dollars a mirror. Like, question: We have a mirror over here, <laughs> and let's say you're in a down state. Look in the down state, you see, hmm, and and say, hey, hey, I want to see a smile in that picture, and there's a mirror. Yeah. Now some people look at mirrors and they say, oh, this losing my hair, or this thing's going wrong, my hair's getting gray. That's the other way is who cares? That's not the main thing. The main thing. Hey, am I in a joyful state right now? You want to know what state you're in? Get a mirror. Get a mirror. Get a mirror. Great, awesome. Yeah, you know, one of the things I, I've done at my happiness club meetings is I get people in that state because you and I have shared experiences with NLP, and um, I get people to think of a time when they were really happy, when they were felt powerful, get that thought into their head, right. you know, associate it with it as much as they right. can in every way, thinking, bodily, right. thinking, get into it, and then if they're righties, make a fist and then go, right. yes! Right. And then what they do is any time they feel like it, they're feeling down or, you know, f feeling just, yeah! yeah, and then boom, you're right. in that state. Exactly, and that thing with Baylor and Greer was found by just looking around the world who was successful at putting people in good states. Now one of the Psychiatrist that Bill and Grinder studied. Milton Erickson. Right, Dr. Milton Erickson. And in one of my books, my book called Marriage, I have a story that about Milton Erickson, which is my, my favorite stories in the field of psychology, because it shows the power of what we can do to make positive trend changes. The word change I have a little problem with. Even though I use the word change, of course, but change implies you have a problem, change. But the way you're at the, this goes straight into good feeling, goes straight to good state, straight so Milton Erickson was once dealing with an elderly lady who was very depressed. She stayed home, no structure to life, didn't do anything. So I have a formula for personal growth. Goals, traits, state, self-image. GTSS, goals, traits, state, self-image, equals brain. Belief, right way, action, imagination, now. I'll come back to that hopefully and we'll deal with a little more. But with what Milton Erickson found with this woman who any usual psychiatrist today would probably get Prozac because she wasn't doing anything with her life. She was just depressed. And he found that she liked African violet plants. So he told her to buy 200 flower pots with seeds for African violets and cultivate them. They need a lot of oxygen. They need a lot of water. And give them out as gifts. Find 200 people. Visit people in the hospital. Go to weddings. Go to celebrations of all kinds go to graduation, give them out as gifts. So she was busy with her plans. She became known as the African Violet Queen of her city. Her self-image changed, her goals changed. She was busy constantly sharing her love for these beautiful plants. Her character traits, her character was upgraded, but she was being kind all the time. Her states were feeling great. She made people smile, other people made her smile, and her self-image went from this old lady who was just depressed to this African Violet Queen. And we have. Now, you don't find other psychiatrists say, okay, get your African violet plans, but every person will have areas of meaningful goals that we can do, like Chiksa Mahalia in his book, Flow, classic book, beautiful book, find if you're working on a goal that's valuable, that's important, that's going to help you be in a good state yourself. But even if we're just in the moment, putting yourself in a good state, we choose in the moment. I think that's so valuable, so important. And we're always mm -hmm. in the now. Mm -hmm. We're always in the present. And the present, we always make four choices. We're going to choose. And the, first of all, our choices come from where is in our brain, because our brain stores every positive state. Now, some say, well, those are sort of negative states. Sure, but you choose which one you're going to pull out with your access. So. Every positive state we're in, we can choose from our brain. In our brain, we choose, we have our thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. And 
So we have a library of our brain. It's an amazing. We have 100 billion neurons in our brain. Everybody hear that one? 100 billion neurons, and you carry them with you. So that means every good moment in your life, every good statement that you've ever heard, every positive action, every time you wave and smile to the mirror, it's in there. It's in there. So I said I collect states. is like this. So, for instance, 45 years ago, when I went to study in I'm from the city of Baltimore, I studied in Cleveland, Ohio, there was a rabbinical college called Tel the Yeshiva. And there was a rabbi there, Rabbi Mordechai Gifter, of blessed memory, and he was a person who knew me from before, and he had a very powerful voice, very powerful orator, and very passionate person. And when I walked in the room with all these teachers and rabbis, and I was a little nervous getting my test, I was only 13 years old, and my teacher said to me, good morning, Zelig, how are you today? So at that time, I didn't have the word states in my vocabulary. That was in 1959. But once I do, so I have the word states. So one state, I go in every morning, I hear my teacher tell me. First, I say, I'm grateful I'm alive. We have expression, modani, I'm grateful that I'm alive. And the next thing, I go in the state of hearing my teacher tell me, good morning, Zelig, how are you today? The third state I go in every morning is my Trent Dilfer state. Now, it helps if you're from Baltimore for this state, but you don't have to be. In May, in, that was in January uh, 2001. The Baltimore Ravens won the Super Bowl, 34-7, and Trent Dilfer was the quarterback. So after the game, a reporter asked him, Trent, how do you feel? You must feel happy, feel good. He says, you know, I feel really good. I mean, the winning quarterback, and he did so wonderfully well, successful. He says, I feel good. But this is nothing compared to waking up every morning and thanking God for adversity because through adversity God helps you develop your character. That's from a quarterback, not from a minister, <laughs> Rabbi, that was from a quarterback. Great state. I mean, the joy of waking up every morning and winning the Super Bowl every morning. You know, uh, the 32 teams, only one team wins. You know, this way, uh, you know, you just wake up, I'm alive, this is terrific. And if you want to remember you're alive, there's great machines that most people have called a telephone. Telephones ring. Right? And people have your choices. Oh, no, another telephone call. Good to get a telephone call. But every time you're a telephone call, you can make a little program in your brain. Hey, I hear the telephone ring. That means I'm alive and I can hear. Great. It's great that I'm alive and can hear. Even if you drop something, you can go in your state. Thank God gravity's still working state. So you're talking about getting back centered into the now moment. We're in the moment. We're always in the moment. And whether we think about the past, we're thinking about the past in the moment, we're thinking about the future, we're thinking about the future in the moment. Now, most people can change their states easily. It's called worry or upsetness or anger. Do you ever see a person who's feeling all right and let's see in one's own home, somebody says something, the other one doesn't like it. Hey, I don't like who say that. You get angry in a second. People change their states in a second. And then they're angry and somebody calls on the phone, they pick up the telephone. Oh, hello, how are you? People change their states in a moment. Our brains can change our states in a moment. And the key element is, master this. It's a skill. But some people try this. Like some people tell me, oh, I try to collect states. It doesn't work that much. I remember a good feeling I have, but I don't really feel it. It's skill. Like any skill. person, Ted Williams was a great baseball hitter, right? It takes a while till you get that mastery. Tiger Woods, great golf. You don't get mastery in any sport right away. Learning to master our states takes time, patience, and we're all unique because one of three words I always say about this, individualized, balanced, comprehensive. We have a unique life, unique makeup, unique genetic makeup, life history. We're all unique. We need a balance. Too much of anything will be problematic. Balance and comprehensive. We have to take in our whole situation. Let's say a person knows how to be in a great state, and you walk in places and say, hi, everybody. I hope everybody's feeling good. He says, oh, what's this guy going on like that for? You might get somebody's nerves. You have to have comprehensive. You're getting people's nerves. You know, Our biggest problem should be to cut down our enthusiasm for life and act normal. You know, like I'm not telling anybody to do anything that sounds too strange. Just act balanced. Hey, Rabbi, um, you've written extensively on ways of becoming happier, gratitude, seeing happiness as an obligation, overcoming worrying, etc. But now your research is on states, and it seems to be like a very, very important way to implement all the other ways of becoming happier. Can you talk about the rela that relationship, like how states is important to all the ways of becoming happier? Right. See, states is, a, I consider like a model. It's a, a model of how to look at our emotions. Because we have different words. Take the word, let's say, the word mood. You ever hear somebody say, I'm in a bad mood today. And, well, well, if you're in a bad mood and you're stuck, what can you do? You're in a bad mood. But if you, I found by using the word state, let's say a person would say, I'm in a really awful state right now. 
just saying that, your real estate right now, you're just saying, that's how I feel right now. Because knowing about states is not going to guarantee a person positive states. A person can be really aware of the states. I once read one book on psychosomatic illnesses that people get from worry and negativity. And the author says while he was putting out the book, he was under a lot of stress. And he got, came up with different psychosomatic problems. Writing about psychosomatic problems doesn't mean you're not going to get them. So thinking about states and talking about states and reading about states and trying to see the latest research on states is not necessarily guarantee you always a good state. But at least you know what you're looking for. Because outcome thinking, which is a basic NLP principle, but like the sages had said many, many years ago, who's wise? The person who sees the outcome, knowing what we want. So in the formula of GTSS, goals, traits, state self-image equals brain, B is our beliefs, our attitudes create our, the way we feel, our cognitive therapies are like that, Beck and Ellis, and each one has their own little models in the sense a little different, but our thoughts affect us tremendously. R in brain is an acronym that said right way, go towards what you want. Like since I wrote a book called Anger Did a Teacher, I have people telling me, you know, I keep saying, don't get angry, don't get angry, and I still get angry. I said, no wonder, what word are you talking about? You're talking about anger. So if you tell your brain, don't get angry, your brain goes in the file called anger. That's not going to push you in a good place. I said, oh, I don't want to be so nervous. That's going to get you nervous. Say, what do you do want? Right away means, uh, what state do you want? Just say, oh, I'd love to be in a calm state right now. Now, if you talk the way you are when you talk calmly and you breathe, <sighs> now breathe calmly and peacefully. For instance, let's say you're trying to fall asleep at night and water's dripping. One way you can go is the dripping water. But it's really not annoying. That is annoying. So you make the dripping water cause a problem. In NLP language, they'll be called an anchor, a negative anchor. Or a person can just cha change the attitude. The dripping water is making me calm and relaxed. The dripping water is making me calm and relaxed. Can you do this all the time? Of course not. But we can do it a lot of times, and you don't know how good you'll get at a skill unless you try. So B, R, R is the right way. A is action. We need to take actions to go for our goals. And the action of states, I consider the one habit that I wrote about in this journal, Anchor Point, um, on collecting states. Write down the names of your favorite states. When you're in a positive state, you, let's say you're studying for a test, and your mind is clear, like you're in the zone, you're in flow. Give it a name. Oh, when I'm flowing, say like that. Or I have to grow up downtown Baltimore near the Chesapeake Bay. Fort McHenry was very near my house. I used to, as a young child, I used to hear the tugboats coming from Chesapeake Bay. Always, whenever I heard a Star Spangled Banner, Francis Scott Key wrote it very near my house. And whenever I heard the at night, the foghorns, wow, the Star Spangled Banner stayed. Okay, say, can you see? And even though we travel different places, and still would ever hear that, so it puts me personally back in a wonderful state. And, and the, any patriotic American, you're going to feel that way. You feel that positive state associated. We all have these states. By writing down your favorite states, and that's why it's so important for parents, so important for teachers to help their people they encounter be in positive <coughs> states. Yeah. So what you're saying then is, um, <clears throat> Since outcome thinking is so important, what do you desire? What, you know, not What's not you what want. don't you right. want. Right. Now, when you when you equate this with state, what you're also setting up here is the idea that you have a choice, which is integral to the whole thing. Because right. not only do you have a choice, <clears throat> but with states, you have a strategy mm -hmm. to to work that choice. Right. But you sort of you, uh, state is almost like realizing you, you still have a choice to change something right. or to flow into something Beautiful. else, as you put it. Very good, Lionel. Because at any moment we have a choice, and that's so valuable. Because first of all, a person thinks I'm always going to be in a good state. I find that creates pressure. Most people that'll put them in a negative state. Why? Oh. I felt pretty good 23 hours, but there was a whole hour in the day that wasn't good. Even 23 and a half good hours. Uh oh, I'm not perfect yet. Don't try to be perfect. Enjoy the process. And that's so important. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. And it's impossible not to make progress on your own level. Don't compare yourself to how anybody else is doing. Just keep working at work. Work is light thing. Just focusing. Just focusing. Flow. Flow. And if you want to put other people in a good state, you just have to say things. For instance, one of my states that I have, it's more of a little humorous state, I took three of my grandchildren to the zoo once. And at the time, one was eight, one was five, one was three. The eight-year-old had a great time at the zoo. The five-year-old had a great time. The three-year-old were by the monkeys. And the three-year-old said, I want to see the zebra. So I said, we're going to see the zebra, but look at the monkeys. They're so interesting. They're jumping around. They're climbing the tree. Look at the zebra. Look at the, look at the monkey. And he says, I want to see the zebra. I want to see the zebra. Okay, then we get to the bear. The bear's climbing. The bear's swimming. Look at the bear. I want to see the zebra. We'll get there. We can't fly. We're not birds. Like We're going to get there. But enjoy the animals while we go along. Look at the bear. 
Then we get to the elephant. I want to see the zebra. I said, we're going to see the zebra, but look at the elephant. Look how big it is, and look at its trunk, and look how these elephants are walking together. It's so interesting. I want to see the zebra. Then we get to the lion. I want to see the lion. I said, you're going to see the, I want to see the zebra. I said, you're going to see the zebra, the joy of the lion. Finally, we get to the zebra. I said, oh, so I call that state, I want to see the zebra. That is, I want to go, and only the state that I want to go into, which is seeing, involved in seeing the monkey, I seeing the zebra, and not enjoying anything else along life. For a three-year-old, it's very cute. You're going with your grandchild. You know, it's cute. Adults do that all the time. I want this or I want sure, that. It's called not being in the present moment. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so when even you give it a name like, oh, I want, I'm in my, I want to see the zebra state, then it's a little humor to it. And you add humor, it puts you in a much better state. Norman Cousins did the research on uh, humor. and True anatomy of illness. Yeah, illness right. yeah. Good, okay. We've got about two minutes left. Um, wow, time just, fast. Yeah, yeah, very quickly. So just very briefly, like in terms of like you, you um, identify the states, <coughs> You list them, and then <clears throat> what? Is, yeah, but not. It's very important. Listen, when you said list, right. some people look at it. Isn't that make you obsessive or compulsive? No, you don't have to remember even what state you have in mind. Just knowing, hey, I got a lot of great states in my mind. <coughs> then automatically you can flow better. It's like once the inner book, inner game of tennis. There's a book called Inner Game of Tennis. Galloway that, wrote that. Galloway. So once you know the moves. Forget about the moves, it'll be automatic. So once you know how to put yourself in a good state, it's United States. All the states are coming yeah. together and just let yourself flow. Yeah. You know, with all this talk about NLP in the states, we've got to talk about Tony Robbins for yeah, two seconds. Right. I mean, you you know his work, you think yes. he's I thought what's very done amazing, a good job. he was a young yeah. fellow when he started, and I've never personally met him, but I like his works very much. He's a person this he decided he had high school, then at college, and he decided he took the NLP course, yes. and then he decided he's great at it. But he said about low schooling, there was Edison had three months schooling. Wow. So which means it's an attitude. Edison had attitude, I'm going to make the light bulb. I'm going to do different things. And we can all create our own light bulbs, our own light in our light, and live a lot of life light in other people's lives. Great. Okay. Now, I've got to include this plug because, I mean, we've got just a few seconds left. Mm -hmm. um, Gateway to Happiness, you know, Lionel and I both agree it's by far the best book on happiness written because it's so comprehensive, yes. you know, so um, it's, if you log on to the happiness, happinessclub.com or the happinessshow.com, we'll both have links to exactly where you can buy it. Rabbi, thank you so much. This has been excellent. Okay, well, um, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. Be good, think well, feel very happy, and I hope you'll join us again next time here on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful, it's our underlying need. Happiness is why we live each day, happiness is destiny, so let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Let's be so very happy